What's up, Blue Kittens? It's me, Keisha, and I'm here with this week's All Tea All Shade Power Season 3, Episode 5 Review. Tonight's episode was lit, as always. I told y'all to get ready for Episode 5. Also told y'all about a few things that were going to happen in this week's episode, but y'all don't be believing me for whatever reason. I do not know. I keep on telling y'all I'm a best-selling author. Google me if you do not know. Keisha Irvin. This is what I do for a living. Writing is my forte. I told y'all about a few things that was going to happen in this episode, but some of y'all didn't believe me. But okay, I'm not going to brag too much. Let's get into the episode. We start off tonight's episode with Tommy in his loft apartment acting like a total fucking crackhead. Like he ain't never had no good shit. I mean, he over there just fucking up all that good, nice wood in that damn apartment. And Holly sneaks up behind him and taps him on his shoulder. And he's looking like, what the fuck, you know, because he is just per annoyed. Tommy is shook after getting shot. And he's starting to have doubts about whether or not it was Lobos that made the attempt on his, on his life. Holly is like, yes, it was Lobos. It was him. We need to figure out a way to save ourselves, save our lives. Because if we don't kill ghosts, Lobos is going to kill us. And I ain't the fuck about to die. He says that they're going to come up with a plan to kill ghosts together. That they're not leaving that damn apartment until they figure out a way to kill ghosts. And I'm like, you niggas need to get out that goddamn apartment. Because both of y'all need some sun with y'all pale, albino looking asses. Like, please go get some sun. So then we switch to Ghost and Angel over there in that small ass apartment and he over there fingering her early in the morning. I'm like, she ain't even watch her pussy yet. I know your fingers smell like corn chips, baked potatoes, old hot dog, water meat, <laughs> fish, ass and gill, and monastery. Like, nigga, go wash your hands. And neither one of you niggas brushed your teeth yet and you over there sucking on her nipples and shit. And then you get the fuck of her. And I must say, kudos to Omari Hardwick because that nigga know how to do a motherfucking sex scene. Julio and Kane and asses need to take motherfucking note because that nigga was working that back giving her some good old slow motion, slow motion for me, slow motion for me. I said, uh, I like it like that. She working that back. I don't know how to act. He was giving her some old death strokes, but Angela was sitting over there looking like, oh, I hope this nigga will hurry up and finish and get the fuck up because I got to be at work in like 10 more minutes and like... I'm tired, like my back hurt, my vagina hurts, I'm so tired of fucking this nigga. Like, he peeps that she is just not into it, and he roll up off her, and he like, Angela, what's wrong? You know, we love each other, we supposed to be in a honeymoon state, bitch, what's the problem? So she was like, Tariq hates me, and Paz hates you, and then there's your wife, you're still married to Tasha. And so, as he's sitting there like, oh, fuck, that's another thing I got to fucking deal with. Sex texts Angela and says to her that they have a Ruiz strategy meeting in like the next 20 minutes and she needs to get down to the office ASAP. Lobos is in the hospital jail or whatever acting a complete goddamn fool. He is throwing a major bitch fit about Ruiz being found. Mike is standing there looking like he about to get whooped with a switch. <laughs> so Mike tells Lobos that Ruiz is coming to the federal building and so Lobo says that he wants his boy Hugo to be snuck into the building to kill him and Mike says that you know we can't do that because you have to have a pre-approved ID in order to get into the building so that won't work and he can't have another witness killed on his watch it's bad for business it's gonna make him look bad raise suspicion he just can't do that he apologized to Lobos Lobos like I don't want to hear that shit don't tell me sorry no more poppy I'm so sick of you telling me sorry you told me sorry about me getting locked up you told me sorry about me getting shot and shanked i'm just sick of you you know what at this point i'm starting to think what i want to do first kill you or kill your daughter proctor look cute little midget self is at the courthouse and ghost calls him and tells him that he wants to file a separation agreement with him and tasha since they've been separated for quite a while and proctor's like uh, so Miss Valdez is putting the screws to you. He don't really think that that's a good idea because all the information that Tasha has on him. And Ghost is like, hold up, hold up, pump your brakes. This is just a separation, not a divorce, at least not yet. Tasha already said she wouldn't hurt their bank accounts for the kids by sending him to jail. I'm like, Ghost ain't fooling no goddamn body. He just trying to give Angela them fucking separation papers to keep her ass contained for right now so she won't fucking leave him but at the end of the day he's never going to divorce Tasha because he cannot risk if he ever gets called into court her being able to go and testify him on any means necessary and at this point he just think he know Tasha so well and what Tasha will and won't do child I'm like you sure she won't testify against 
with you because uh, homegirl ain't been feeling you too much lately. And if you keep on treating her like the piece of shit you act like she is, I'm pretty sure she will have no problems with giving your ass up if need be. Then we see Angela. She goes over to Greg's apartment and she says to him, you don't have to do this you went off to find Ruiz to prove this little theory of yours that Jamie is ghost. Why isn't putting Lobos in jail enough for you? And Greg says, why is it enough for you? It never would have been before. You used to be one of the good guys. And so Angela says, so did you. You keep trying to force Jamie into this prosecution, but it's not going to work. And Greg says, you love the guy. No matter what he does or what you learn, you just can't let it go. I get it. But aren't you tired of lying for him? And Angela says, I'm tired of fighting you. You can't forgive me. That's fine. But don't screw up this case because of me. And Greg says, don't screw up this case because of him. And I was like, <laughs> Greg, talk that talk. Talk that motherfucking talk, nigga. He is at home doing his schoolwork because you know that nigga has been suspended. And so Tasha walks into his room and Tariq says to her, okay, I'm almost done with my work. I know we got to leave in a minute. And she says, change of plans. You're going to spend the day with your father. And he's like, huh, oh, what do I have to? Like, he is not seeing it for ghosts. He is tired of ghosts like the rest of us. And she says, Tariq, it's a good thing. You two can spend some quality time together. Tariq says, what, Angela was busy? Like, that's the only time a nigga act like he we even exist is when he ain't up that motherfucking Puerto Rican bitch ass. She says, watch your boy. What is going on with you? I'm like, see, I don't like that line with watch your boy. Shit, I'm with Tariq. Shit, he tell the motherfucking truth, God damn it. Shit, Tariq, keep on talking. Shit, say what the fuck you got to say. Ain't no watch your boy. I would've gave that nigga a high five. So, she says, what is going on with you? And he says, nothing. It's the same with him anymore. He's changed. He's different. And so, Tasha says, Tariq, this is where we are now. I know things don't look the way you want them to, but your dad is trying, okay? And then we see Jamie in the motherfucking hallway, ear hustling, listening to everything that they're talking about. And so, Tasha says to Tariq, he wouldn't want to spend the day with you if he wasn't, right? The least you can do is try to. And Tariq says, if you're saying I have to, then I will. It's not that I wanted to because I don't. <laughs> I love how the writers are showing how separation and divorce affects the children. My only problem with that is that they're focusing everything on Tariq. If Tariq and Raina are supposed to be twins, then why aren't they showing how it's affecting both of them? I would think that with them being twins, that he would be having conversations with Raina about how he feels about his dad leaving and this, this, and that. Let's see Raina's perspective on this whole thing. And I love the fact that they're showing Tasha being an upstanding woman and not bad-mouthing the kid's father to them, although she could, and most women do. I love the fact that she is not one of those women that bad mouth the father, even though, even though he is a fucking just scumbag um, and horrible fucking father at times, that she's still not bad-mouthing him to the kids. And you would think that Ghost would at least take that into consideration considering everything that he has going on and the way that he treats her, but he's a nigga, so whatever. At Ruiz's meeting, Greg suggests that they ask Ruiz to give up Lobos and the entire organization. He wants places, products, names, everything. Mike says Lobos won't go for it. Angela agrees, because you know this is in the best interest for both of them niggas. And so the head boss that's over Mike agrees with Greg. And switch back to Tommy's crib and him and Holly are discussing killing ghosts. And she says, why don't you just pull a bullet in his head? And he's like, I cannot kill him in broad daylight. Like somebody will see me. I'm like, Holly, sit your frail ass down somewhere. Always coming up with the dumbest fucking ideas. Just sit your ass down somewhere and go eat something, bitch. You hungry. That's why you're always frantic and nervous because you're hungry with your skinny ass. Whew. So then there's a big knock on the door and they both are scared. So Tommy pull out his gun and he goes to the door and it's his old cokehead and says she was ass mama. And so he's like, mama, what you doing here? And she, I didn't have a fucking choice. The mortgage is past due. He says, well, it got to be a mix up. I'll call Tasha and have her uh, bring you over some checks. And so he's trying to usher her out the house or whatever. But she sees his wound on his arm. And she was like, who did this to you? I know whoever did it, you and Ghost will take care of it, right? Holly walks up on Kate and Tommy like she's saying to stalk or some shit like she that bitch like she queen of the north or some shit Kate says who the hell is this and Tommy says mom this is Harley 
And Holly introduces herself as his girlfriend, extends her hand, and Kate sees her mother's ring on her finger. Fit to avoid some confrontation and some awkward fucking moments, Tommy tries to shoot his mother out the door, and she's like, no, I'm not fucking leaving till I get the checks. Besides, I want to know Haley a little more. And Holly's like, it's Holly, bitch, not fucking Haley. I ain't no Haley Joe Osmond, or who the fuck you think I am? It's Holly, bitch. Holly. He goes, and he takes Tariq to the club. And Tariq is just not beat for this shit. He's like, nigga, I could be at home playing my Xbox. I'm probably going to be at your little rinky-dink-ass club. And so Ghost gives him some tickets to the basketball game. And Tariq is so excited about this. And then, so Ghost tells Tariq that um, he can have the tickets, but that he'll have to work for it since he stole Angela's gun. So then we see Dre fine ass come on down the steps, honey, looking suited and booted in his motherfucking cashmere sweater and shit. That nigga look like new money, smell like new money. Like, baby, I just want to back it on up on Dre. That nigga got some money, honey. He got some coin shit. That nigga ain't shopping at Ross no more. That nigga ain't shopping at TJ Maxx no more. That nigga's all up in motherfucking Bergdorf Goodman, sexy shit, Neiman Marcus. I was like, yeah, Dre, yeah. Ghost introduces Dre to Tariq and kind of look at Tariq like, oh, what's up, little, little homie, whatever. You know, Dre is always standoffish with his mentor's sons because I don't know if they got daddy issues. He never had no daddy, but he was just not here for Tariq in the beginning. Dre stresses to Ghost how much they need to talk. And he's like, not now. He tells Dre that Tariq will be his assistant for the day. And I'm like, that's a horrible ass motherfucking idea. And right there is when they sow the seed of what I was telling y'all last week that Kanan is going to do something to Tyreek and he's going to be able to do it through Dre. I told y'all this. Y'all was all down in the comment section doubting what your girl was telling y'all. But once again, the girl was right. Y'all gonna start listening to me when I tell y'all about this shit. Doctor is still at the courthouse at the federal building and the halls are being cleared for a high value witness to come through. Proctor asks the little security guy what's going on and he tells me, you know, he's ushering everybody into the elevator. So Proctor pays the security guard to hold the elevator so he can see exactly who this witness is. And he sees Ruiz and Angela and that nigga is about to shit a ton of booty. Like, holy fuck, what the fuck is going on, son? Max and Greg try to pump Ruiz information. They want him to work with them as a criminal informant. Ruiz's lawyer is like, you march my client through the halls where anyone can see him and you want him to snitch? Like, who in the fuck came up with this goddamn idea? Like, Northwest? St. West? Like, who the fuck came up with this dumb bullshit? Scott Disick? Who, who the fuck... It's working up in this motherfucker. Y'all got to be the dumbest motherfuckers I've seen in my life. Doctor, he's at Truth now in Ghost's office. And he says to Ghost, I thought you said that you got rid of Ruiz and that you made him skip town. And that he was going to be gone for good. And Ghost is like, I did. Proctor says to him, well, I just saw him at the federal building, girl. <laughs> so I don't know what the fuck you thought you was over there doing. And Ghost dumbass is like, Ruiz got arrested? And he was like, honey, girl, child, no. It didn't look like no arrest to me. And he was with your girlfriend, Angela. And Ghost is looking like he on the motherfucking soap opera again. Look like. like. Like he Victor Newman or some shit. And he says, she didn't tell me. And I'm like, nigga, you think? Duh. He says to him, he's going to snitch. The question is, on who? And he was like, Angela didn't warn you at all? And Ghost is like, nah, she didn't. He was like, look, I know you've been adamant about not wanting to use her, but look, homeboy, it's obvious she doesn't have your back. Oh, and I got the separation papers you asked for, but at this point, are you sure you want them? <laughs> so Proctor throws the papers at him and leaves because he is just tired of this nigga. He is so tired of fucking Ghost because everybody looking at this nigga like, what are you thinking with your head or your dick? We go back to the apartment and we see Holly get a text message from the Jamaicans asking for an address on go so they can get the job done. Katie asks for a pick-me-up, so he sets out some blow for her. And Katie asks Holly how they met. And Holly says, I was a waitress at Truth. And so Katie Shady ass says, oh, so you fucked the boss. That's always the way to go when you don't want to work. <laughs> So Holly look at her like, oh, this bitch got to die. She got the motherfucking go. Because I have had enough of her. So then them two niggas, Katie and Tommy, do a motherfucking line of blow right in front of this girl. And I'm looking like, oh, you two motherfuckers is crazy.
Then there's another bam at the door. I'm like, everybody just want to come over and see Tommy. It's Tasha at the door. Katie, fake ass, run up to Tasha. Tasha, girl, hey, how you doing, bitch? I ain't seen you in a good minute, ho. Tasha says, well, I'm glad to see the family all together. Hey, y'all. <laughs> Katie, fake ass, asks Tasha, you know, how his goes, how is he doing? And Tasha says, honestly, I can't say I see very much of him anymore, Miss Egan. Ghosts moved out. And so Katie's like, oh, yeah, I heard he was messing around with the girl from high school, Angela Valdez. Oh, I thought that would be over by now. And Tasha looked like, well, bitch, it ain't. Uh, okay, here time, here go these checks. Katie, come on, girl, it's time for us to go. And Katie's like, uh-uh, girl, I ain't leaving no motherfucker where I'm, I'm hungry. I'm about to make me a sandwich. I'm about to kick back. I want to know more about this hoe. Holly walks up to Tasha and says, she does blow with her son. And Tasha's like, this is Kate on a good day. Wait till Tommy tells her about the baby. And Holly is like, shh, shut the fuck up. And she's like, fuck, you haven't told him yet? And she was like, no, I haven't. Be the fuck quiet. And Holly says, I'm sorry she brought up the whole ghost thing. Is he with Angela today? Fishing for information so she can know where he's at so she can give the Jamaicans a fucking location. And so Tasha says, no, he's at the club. And we see Greg, he comes into the office and corners Ruiz in the conference room. Ruiz tells him he only give up Lobos. Anything else is on y'all niggas, basically. Y'all can kiss my motherfucking ass. So Greg says, I know you ordered the murder of No More, and I know you had Tommy Egan do it. Ruiz denies it at first. And Greg says, with No More being a federal informant, he'll get the death penalty, and he has him on voice recording because no more was wearing a wire. So Wes at this point is just fucked up. He shook and he was like, look, nigga, what the fuck you want? And so Greg tells him that he wants the, the chain in command. He wants him to give up ghost identity. We switch back to the club and ghost at the bar looking over the separation papers and deep thought because at this point he doesn't know whether he can trust Angela or not if he's making the right decision. And then Dave, the security guard, comes over and gives him a drink. He apologizes for losing his eye on Ghost the other night and not being able to tell him when he left the club early. And Ghost is like, it's okay, it's all right, it was a busy night. We told y'all that Dave was not his driver when he went and killed Dylan and them. He followed Ghost and he saw everything. Ghost still doesn't know that he saw him kill Dylan and all them. Told y'all. Y'all better start listening to me. Dave asked Ghost, you know, will this be a reoccurring thing? Will you just be leaving without telling us? And Ghost is like, well, basically, I got to tell you shit because you work for me. But at this point, I don't need you to tell me or surveil me anymore since I don't have any threats. I just need you to watch over the club. And Dave was looking like you sure. Like, you know, he want to tell him that he knows what he be up to, but he kept his mouth shut. He goes, go over to the DJ booth to Tariq. He's showing him his Twitter page. He calls it the Twitter, acting like an old ass man. And Tariq is laughing at him and tries to have a good fatherly moment with his son and tries to play daddy for once and asks him, you know, why is he so angry? What's going on with you? Why did you take Angela's gun? And Tariq says to him, you know, you moved out. Make me meet Angela and you move in with her and you don't even talk to us about it. What kind of father does that? And I'm like, <laughs> No clap for Tyreek. Read your goddamn father for Phil. About time somebody says something to this nigga about the shit that he do. And so Ghost is just standing there like somebody didn't slapped him in the motherfucking face with the truth. He don't know how to handle it when motherfuckers read him on his motherfucking rights and shit. So he just standing there looking stupid. And he says to his son, a real man apologizes when he's done something wrong. I guess I handled all that wrong. I'm sorry, son. I'm sorry. And I'm like, you always talking about oh, what a real man do. Well, let me tell you something, Ghost. A real man wouldn't have did half the shit you did. He would have known better not to do the shit that you fucking did in the first place. So you ain't no motherfucking real man while you keep on talking about a real man motherfucking do. How about you go find a real motherfucking man, nigga? Because you ain't the motherfucking real man. He hugs Tariq, and Tariq is holding on to him for dear fucking life. And Ghost is kind of like startled and puzzled by this because he's looking like, what is this emotion? Like, why is he holding on to me? I don't, I, I don't understand it. Like, please let me go. This is making me uncomfortable. Because you know this nigga don't understand no kind of emotion unless it's anger, revenge, killing somebody or fucking like any other than that he don't understand it it's foreign to him he's like mr robot it's just way too much for him to fucking internalize so back to angela's job and the head boss comes in and tells them that ruiz has complied and that once ruiz signs the agreement he wants him transferred to lockdown in dc till he testifies 
Angela excuses herself, and then next thing we see is that she's in truth, and she goes and tells Ghost. She says, Jamie, you asked me if I would tell you if things ever got serious and if you need a lawyer. Well, I think you'll need to get one. And so Ghost says, I see. Well, were you going to tell me about Wes? And she says, how do you know about that? And he says, is he in town to testify against Tommy, me, or Lobos? Which one the fuck is? She said, no, no, no. How the fuck do you know that? How do you know about Wes? And he says, not from you, bitch. You shit. I mean, it doesn't really fucking matter. He says to her, Wes is a problem you created and I got rid of it. Now you have to help me. And she says, I have helped you more than I should have. You have to trust me, though, Jamie. He says, I did before. Now, I don't really know. You know, giving us some guilt trip on her ass. And she looking like, oh, my God, he's going to take the dick away. He's going to take his big black dick away. I have to do something. I have to make him trust me again. I cannot lose the big black dick. He gets a text message from her office. And she's like, I got to go. And so as she's walking away, he has her hand. And she snatches her motherfucking hand away. He's looking at her like, how dare you snatch your hand away from me, yo? And I was like, you two motherfuckers are way too dramatic for me. I feel like I'm watching an episode of God and Light when I see these hoes on screen. Like, oh my God. Like, somebody shoot them niggas, please. Trey goes home to his crib. And he's like, baby, I'm home. Where my daughter at? And the next thing you know, we see Kanan holding his motherfucking daughter. And this nigga is shook. He about to shit his motherfucking pants. He like, K -K 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 Kanan, what you doing here? K can you please put my daughter down? Tells to him. I told your girl I look after little mama. You know, you failed me, Dre. You picked ghosts over me. And Dre says, no, 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 no. I didn't. Trust me. I, please, just put my daughter down. And so, Kana says to him, you had one job. Why are you sitting here like you about to shit yourself? And Dre says, ghost, trust me. I, I, I swear to God, ghost, trust me. And so, as he's talking and begging for, you know, Kanan not to do nothing crazy, Kanan is holding his daughter up in the air, playing with her, and then he, like, takes her over to the window like he's about to throw out the window. And Dre is fucking shook. He's like, no, 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 look, 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 wait, 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 I got him right where I want him. I, I promise. I, I got him right where I need him to be. I just spent the whole day with his kid, man. I, I, I promise. So, Kanan puts the little girl down. Dre rushes over and picks her up. And he was like, you know what? I'm going to hit you up, so be ready when I need you. I told y'all that Kane is going to do something to Tari, but y'all didn't believe me. And I was right. And y'all was wrong. <laughs> Let me stop playing with y'all. But no, nah, for real, y'all better start listening to me. Angela Snake Ass, she goes to see Ruiz by herself. And she tells him to stick to only talking about Lobos. Ruiz, this one is confused. He's like, all you motherfuckers telling me something different. All y'all got different tactics. I don't know which one of you hoes to believe. He tells her how Greg said they got tapes on him. And you know that he could get the death penalty. And she tells him in Spanish that, you know, go save his life. And that he is his brother for life. And you really need to take that into consideration. Back to Tommy's crib again. And we see Holly. She gets a text from the Jamaican saying, we're in position. It's about to go down. Katie reminds Tommy that Ghost always has had his back. Julio then stops by, and Holly texts the Jamaicans to do it. Julio tells Tommy that Dylan and his crew got wet up in front of a church the night before. And Tommy is putting two and two together. He was like, well, do you know who killed them? Has, is any word out on the street who did it? And Julio was like, nah, I don't know who did it. Julio leaves, and then Tommy's like, Mama, you got to go. I'll give you a ride to the train station. And on her way out, she says, you know what? Get rid of her. I don't like that hoe. And then she kisses Tommy passionately on the lips in front of Holly. And I was like, oh, my God. Just fuck your mother already if you have not. So we go back into the whole interrogation thing. And Wes does not give up ghosts. Real name. Angela is over the fucking moon. She looks back at Greg like, ah gotcha, bitch. <laughs> you got your ass up, no, be all, ah then we switch back to Tommy, and he comes home and tells Holly that it was Dylan that tried to kill him and not Lobos, and that Ghost was the one that had his back and saved him. And Holly's like, it don't really fucking matter who the fuck did it. At the end of the day, you have a job to do or all of us is going to fucking die. Tommy is like, I heard what you said, but I need to talk to my brother. I need to talk to Ghost. And Holly's like, no, I don't want you to get hurt. And he was like, why would I get hurt? So then we switch to Tyreek and Ghost. They're in the car riding. The music is pumping. And next thing you know, 
Somebody hits the back of his car. He hears a thump. He's like, did you hear that? And Tariq was like, yeah, I heard it. He was like, hold up. Sit here. I'm gonna go check and see what it is. So Tariq puts on his headphones. And I'm like, oh shit, it's about to go down. Please let that nigga at least get a graze wound or something. So then we switch back to Holly. And Holly tells Tommy that she hired the Jamaicans to kill ghosts. And he's like, I gotta warn him. I gotta warn him. She's like, no, it's too late. It's already done. Then we switch back over to Ghost. He sees that his car has been hit in the back. And then he looks at the drivers. And then three Jamaican niggas get out the motherfucking lack with guns. Sawed off shotguns and all type of shit. And they red. They got the guns pointed on Ghost. And Ghost is like, fuck, nigga, really? Then he looks back really dramatically at Tyreek. And it was like this. How many times did I take for it finally got through? You lose, you lose. I'm like, this nigga, give him an Emmy already. Oh, back to Tommy's crib, and Tommy is freaking the fuck out. He's like, no, 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 oh my god, no, no. He tells Holly, he's like, Holly, get the fuck out, Holly. Get the fuck out. Get the fuck out, Holly. And so she slaps the sh dog shit out of him. She slapped him so hard, that nigga got a tan. So you know he crazy. He pushed the shit out of hers. He pushed her so goddamn hard, that bitch gained 10 pounds. So she gets the fuck back up. And she's going off of him. She's like, everything, after everything I've fucking done, after everything he's done to you, you're still only going to care about him? You're still choosing him over me? It's supposed to be me and you. It's supposed to be us. We were supposed to have each other's back, Tommy. How the fuck did you do this? It's about us. Fuck Ghost. You gotta love me, best baby. You gotta love me, best baby. You gotta love me. You gotta love us. It's us against them. It's us, baby. It's us. Next thing you know, this nigga started choking her. <laughs> And then we switch back to Ghost, and he just ready to die. He, he closed his eyes. He like, though I walk through the valley of death, I shall not want or whatever the hell the prayer go. <laughs> so the Jamaicans are ready to take him out. They're about to cock their guns. And then next thing you know, we see <laughs> Dave, the security guards, and his homeboys then pulled the fuck up and marked them niggas before they can kill fucking ghosts. They followed him a fucking game. And I was like, see, ghosts? This motherfucking cracker got your motherfucking back, nigga. You was about to be dead to motherfucking bed, nigga. Ghost opens his eyes and realizes he ain't fucking dead, that these niggas is dead. Dave jump out the car. He's like, you got to get the fuck up out of here. We going to handle this. Ghost is fucking shook. He don't know what the fuck to do. He get in the car. He tells Tariq, he's like, I got to take you home. And Tariq is like, why? Because you got into a vendor building. He's like, look, motherfucker. I got to take your ass home. I don't want you to ask me motherfucking questions. Put your seatbelt on. Shut the fuck up. I got time to play with you little nigga tonight. Shit. Shut the fuck up, nigga. Put your headphones on and sit the fuck back. We switch back to Holly and Tommy, and Holly is steady going off. She's like, you can't do anything without Ghost. You know without him, you ain't shit without him, and you're fucking next, and you're fucking incapable of doing any fucking thing on your own. You're a piece of shit. You're no good motherfucker. You fucking fuck your mother. You're a crackhead. Fuck you. Your dick is small. Uh, this nigga is enraged, because you know he think that Ghost is dead. So he yoke her ass up again and start choking the shit out of this bitch. And this time he ain't letting the fuck go because all he can envision in his head is his best friend, his brother, dead on the motherfucking pavement because of this bitch. So he choking <laughs> the shit out of her. She clawing at his hand. He got blood and shit all on his goddamn hands because she's trying to get his hands off her neck. But he is just in the zone. Spit is flying out his mouth again. This nigga is somewhere the fuck else. I don't know where the fuck this nigga is at. All I was thinking is don't go chasing waterfalls. <laughs> oh, Holly is losing motherfucking eye second by second. Next thing you know, this bitch is dead. <laughs> I was like, y'all got y'all wish. Holly is dead. And I told y'all Holly was going to fucking die. I told y'all she was going to die. And I told y'all she was going to die with Tommy not knowing that she was fucking pregnant. And that he wasn't going to find out she was pregnant until after the fucking fact. And that that was what's going to bring him and Ghost back together with the common enemy of Lobos. I told y'all that last week. But y'all ain't believe me. Pat on the back. Harry, my homeboy in L.A., I told you. I told you what was going to happen. So, for whatever reason, Tommy don't seem to think she dead, for real. He just thinks she playing dead for whatever reason. I'm like, nigga, you just choked the shit out of her. Uh, you don't think she dead? So this bitch falls flat on the motherfucking ground. And so he's like, Holly, 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 
Baby, how? Get up. Stop playing. Get the fuck up. We're about to go to church. Let's get some chicken. Come on, get the fuck up. You want to watch TV? You want to play the Xbox? You want to do a line of blow? Holly. Girl, get up. Ain't nobody got time to be playing with you. Get your ass up, Holly. Shit. Holly. 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 <laughs> he get on the floor and holding her, and he realized that he done killed her ass. Angela comes home and finds Ghost sitting in the motherfucking window looking paranoid and crazy. And she tells him that he's safe and that Ruiz is being transferred out of state and that the Lobos case is over. It's done. It's finito. It's finished. Staring at her like this. He looking like he about to cry and shit. She's like, you asked me to help you. Has no one ever helped you before? And he says, no. Not like you. And I'm like, really, bitch? Tasha help your ass for every motherfucking episode, but you ain't over here crying to her ass. But okay, I digress. The light-skinned girl is the savior. All right. So, he hands her the separation papers. And so, she is fucking ecstatic. She's like, Jamie, do you think Tasha will really sign? Because if you do, it could be trouble. It could be problems. But, oh, my God. You're going to be my motherfucking man. Oh, my God. I get the man. I get him. I get him. He's mine. I'm like... Nigga, you just damn near died five minutes ago, and your mind is still focused on pussy. Like, oh my God, I hate this nigga with a passion. Like, why couldn't one of the Jamaicans at least shoot him in the shoulder like they shot Holly last season in the chest? Like, I hate ghosts with a passion. The night while him and Angela are in the bed, Ghost gets out of bed and put on his ghost gear, his killer gear, and he goes over to Tommy's crib and he breaks inside. He sees Tommy. He's calling around. He's like, Tommy? Tommy, Tommy. And so he walks in and he walks past the pool table. And he sees Tommy sitting on the floor in the fetal position, scared out of his fucking mind. And then he sees Holly laying on the floor dead. Tommy looks up at him and says, help me. So then we switch to Ghost getting rid of the body for him. He gets back in the car. It's raining outside. They sit in the car. Ghost hands Tommy his grandmother's ring back. Tommy says, so the Koreans, that was you? Ghost says yes. Ghost then tells him that he had the tip on his life that night. He says it was the Jamaicans. And so Ghost says, that was you? He was like, no, that wasn't me. That was Holly. So he tells Ghost about how Lobos ordered him to kill him. And that if he didn't do it, he was going to kill Tommy and Holly. Lobos ain't going to stop until you in the ground and me too. You know what we got to do? We got to kill him. And then Tommy turns around to him and says, together. And then it goes off. And I was like, good episode five. A plus to the writers tonight. Cannot wait to see what's going to happen with the whole Kanan and Tariq and Dre thing. I can't wait to see what's going to happen with this whole Ghost, Tasha, Angela, little triangle. It needs to be done and over with this season. Either let him be with Angela for real, for real, or let him go back home. Let him be with neither one of these niggas. I still don't see it for them. I don't think they're going to make it this season. They're going to end up breaking up this season. This will happen ever after they had tonight. It's just for tonight. Tasha get the motherfucking separation papers. It's going to be fucking game on for Tasha. Oh my God. I'm just so excited for the next five episodes. We have five more episodes to go, y'all. And the season will be over. Let me know what you think about tonight's episode down in the comment section. What do you think is going to happen in the next five episodes? What do you want to see happen? What was your favorite moment of tonight's episode? Mine was Tariq reading his daddy for filth and Holly dying and Ghost almost dying. <laughs> but I digress. Uh, please share this video on your Twitter, your Facebook, your Instagram. Let everyone know about it. Hell, tweet, tweet the power TV writers. Tweet Courtney Kemp. Tweet 50 Cents. Let everybody know about my power reviews and that they're lit and the best on YouTube. Yeah, I said it. I'm the best. <laughs> um... But no, I really thank you all so much for supporting my channel, supporting my reviews. I have so much fun doing this, and I put so much work into these videos. And I want to say a special thank you to all of my subscribers. I just reached 15,000 subscribers two days ago. So I thank you all for any new subscribers. Welcome to my channel. Welcome to my fuckery. Welcome to my world. I love you all so very much. Have a blessed and safe week, and I will see you all next week. Pure Heroin is the sequel to my first novel, Me and My Boyfriend. If you loved Me and My Boyfriend and want to check up with Misa in Black, check out Pure Heroin now at Amazon.com.